A cheer for our dear Mercer, the best school of them all. We sing at thy praises. We uh, hark to thy call. Bingo. Uh, we always will remember the lessons you have taught. To be brave and courageous, indeed, word and thought. <laughs> Mr. Sputnik. The third time's always the charm, right? Oh, we'll see him all right. Something brilliant is going to happen tonight. I can just feel it. I still can't believe we weren't friends in school. I mean, you were a year ahead of me, but we passed each other in the hall all the time. No, we weren't in any of the same activities. I did orchestra and science club, of course, because that's where a lot of the boys were. <laughs> And I was always going off to after-school ballet. <laughs> Who do you have for home ec? Wilson? <laughs> yes. Do you remember how she was always talking to herself in French? Remember she got excited about something? <laughs> yeah, she had this almost mania about friends. <laughs> Speaking of home ec, I was the original inventor of the baking soda and vinegar volcano. In case you didn't already know. <laughs> That's not possible. You're just making that up. Fine. Don't believe me. Someone had to come up with the idea, and that someone was me. In ninth grade home ec. <laughs> Wait, not that anyone appreciated it at the time, least of all Miss Wilson. <laughs> Mon Dieu, she kept saying as this giant Vesuvius of a volcano erupted all over my linoleum counters, spilling onto the floor. So de la, so de la. <laughs> oh, dear, dear Mercer. <laughs> Best school of them all. The paper sales. And the war bond drives? The war bond drives. <laughs> One day you're knocking on doors, selling war bonds, and before you know it, you're waking up and finding yourself married to one of those valiant soldier boys home from the war. <laughs> should be paying more attention to the sky, I suppose. After all, that is the whole point of us being out here on the roof. 11.08, it's almost time, if we can believe the newspaper. Now, tonight, we're going to work zonally. Satellite should be running in that direction, southwest to northeast. You scan that half of the sky from just above to due west, and I'll take the other half. This is our clearest night yet, so I am very, very optimistic. <laughs> Look, you can even see just a blush of the Milky Way, our home in the universe. <laughs> Do you ever wonder where we are in that lovely galaxy of ours? I know exactly where we are. We're right over there, in the Orion Spur, about a third of the way out from the center. How do you know that? I paid attention in science, unlike some other children who I won't name. Now, as a matter of fact, if we had a powerful enough telescope, we could see ourselves sitting on a rooftop terrace in Bloomington, Indiana, on planet Earth, looking for a Russian satellite. <coughs> we should play a game while we're watching. Like the cities and states game? <laughs> oh, no, that sounds like way too much thinking. How about the one true thing? The one true thing. What's that? Oh, something I used to play with my brothers when we were growing up. When someone calls on you and says the one true thing, you have to say the exact thing you're thinking or feeling, no matter how bad or embarrassing or forbidden or even boring, <coughs> with the understanding that it goes nowhere, that it has no consequences, that it simply stops, and that it will never be brought up again under any circumstances. 
that sounds dangerous. It's very dangerous. <laughs> Did everyone actually follow the rules when you were growing up? Usually not. <laughs> Do you want to play? Yes, I want to play. Okay. I'll go first. You simply say, Bridget, the one true thing, and then I'll go. Okay. Are you ready? Laura. <laughs> I'm always ready. I think you should know that by now. <laughs> okay. Bridget, the one true thing. <sighs> Pigs in a blanket. <laughs> what about them? They came out of a box. <laughs> what do you want? I have kids. <laughs> you know how it is. Okay, your turn. The one true thing. One true thing. No, I don't think I can. Hold on a second. Kenny! Time! Yeah, Bridget? Pop the pigs in the oven, will you? Do I take them out of the box first? <laughs> <laughs> that would be best. Uh, put them on a cookie sheet. Just follow the directions, okay? I'm told he parachuted behind enemy lines in Normandy. Dick ran interference on enemy subs in the South Pacific. <laughs> or you think between the two of them. Anyway, the one true thing. You're saying you don't think you can? It's more like I don't think I should. <coughs> There's no such thing as should and shouldn't do the one true thing. There's simply what is. In this moment. The great and mysterious now. So, go ahead. The one true thing. The one true thing. My one true thing. I am so glad that you and I met at the Operation Nightwatch meeting at the public library a few weeks ago to learn about satellite spotting. Although, obviously, neither of us benefited from that class in the slightest. <laughs> in terms of spotting satellites. <laughs> and yet, as a result of that class, you invited Dick and me <coughs> over to the rooftop terrace of your apartment building, and then the two of you came over to our backyard, and once again, here we are <laughs> on your rooftop terrace together, hoping to finally see Sputnik on its third scheduled appearance in the skies of Indiana. And here's the actual one true thing. I spent the longest time <laughs> trying to figure out what to wear tonight. Not just because there are no published rules for what to wear to a Sputnik watching party. <laughs> it's because I knew you'd be dressed up as someone or something dazzling and I was hoping to catch your eye. If not to outdazzle you, to, to be something that belonged in the same galaxy and at the very least catch your reflected light. And then you simply just dressed as yourself. <laughs> of course. Being yourself serving chill vodka and borscht, pigs in a blanket, from a box. <laughs> so here's the actual, authentically real, one true thing. I think I've fallen in love with you, Bridget, and if you were to take my hand right now and, and ask me to fly off this rooftop with you, I, I would do so without the slightest hesitation. But now, if I'm allowed to have one more, one true thing, if that doesn't break all the rules, I'm just... So 
so sorry. So very sorry that I agreed to play this game and ruined your satellite watching party and especially sorry that after tonight I'll probably never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> So, where's that commie satellite? <laughs> I haven't spotted it yet. Well, it's 11.14 p.m. for crying out loud. It's got to be passing right over our heads. Hmm. Tell me about your system. My system? Kenny told me you had a system for finding it, a grid system, I would hope. You did say it was kind of a grid system, didn't you? There's so much territory to cover, you need a grid system. Otherwise, forget about it. The way she described it to me, it sounded pretty close to a grid. It does. Maybe if we stop obsessing over my system and focus on looking at the actual sky, we'd spot the fucking satellite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boris? Boris Sputnik. <laughs> Where are you? We know you're out there, somewhere. So anyway, Kenny, turns out this customer on the used car lot was the one and only Dr. Wise, the guy who runs the science information line. Remember him? Oh, sure. I recognized his voice right away because I used to call him all the time for help with my science and math homework. And get this, he remembered me. Out of the millions of people that have called him over the last 40 years or so, he actually remembered me. I'll be damned. No sooner had I introduced myself than he says, Dick Hastings, how did that remedial biology exam back in 1939 work out for you? So anyway, turns out he was in the market for a used automobile. His first car purchase ever. Now, do you recall how he used to say that there were just two things in the universe that he knew absolutely nothing about? No, uh, not really. Sports memorabilia and automobiles. Those were the two things. So as far as acquiring an automobile, he just simply said he was going to place himself in my hands. I wanted to take good care of him, of course. I would have loved to sell him a brand new Edsel. But it was out of his budget. <coughs> Fortunately, I had a real beauty in used cars. Uh, Brown and white, 54 Bel Air, one owner, super clean, just came in the week before. So, I open the hood for him. He takes one look and says, from all appearances, it has an internal combustion engine. <laughs> Most cars have one of those nowadays, I said to him. He replaced the horse sometime around the turn of the century. There it is, up there, the uh, Sputnik business, right above the farmer's insurance building. There it is, all right, well done. <laughs> I don't see it. Right there, Dick. See where my finger is pointing? Just above my office, heading towards the northeast. Oh, yeah. What do you know? I don't see it yet. It's right there. Lord, do you see? Moving in that direction? I do now. Sure, I do. Thank you. You gotta admit, after all that build up on TV, it's kind of a disappointment. <laughs> Just a plain white dot. <laughs> they say that people were panicking in the streets somewhere when it first passed overhead. That seems a little extreme, if you ask me. In Peru, I think it was. It doesn't even twinkle, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, I think it's a ravishing sight. Hey, look at it. <clears throat> Up there in outer space, already acting like it owns the place? I can almost hear it saying, why should the stars have all the fun? One day, I bet these satellites will be all over the sky, everywhere you look, as common as sparrows. Seeing one for the first time, it's transfixing, intoxicating. This is a night that's going to mark each one of us 
Forever. Uh, we probably ought to go check on those piggies, Dick. Mm, yeah. Oh, so uh, getting back to Dr. Wise, then he asked me if the tires and the steering wheel are included in the price. <laughs> he was kidding, right? Actually not. I told him I need to talk to my manager, but I was pretty sure we could throw those in the You haven't asked me to leave and never come back. At least not yet. No consequences. Remember? No repercussions. But you can always change the rules if you want. After all, you were one of the inventors. Go ahead, say it. Go home, Laura. You are out of line, so, so please leave. And don't ever. And break both of our hearts. What? Because I know it would break mine. The fugue. The fugue. I revel. Two voices. Two motifs. In counterpoint. Interwoven. Mysteriously becoming one entity, each one making the other complete. Here's the universe, all around us, do you see? And out there, somewhere in the Orion Spur of our galaxy, on the planet Earth, at an end of school year dance recital at the Mercer High School Auditorium, in the year 1944, a 17-year-old girl saw another girl, a year or so younger, dancing, dancing quite beautifully, in fact, unforgettably, to a piece of music the older girl had never heard before. You were there, at the recital, you, you saw me. I didn't know your name, but yes, I saw you 13 years ago. Distant, remote, unattainable object of longing. Forbidden longing, impermissible desire. The next day, the last day of school, Miss Wilson asked if I could stay with the class for a minute. Thought she might have been sore, stuff about the volcano, but <laughs> instead, she told me that she was at the recital too. She couldn't help but notice how my eyes filled with tears as the lights came up after the fugue. She told me she had been in love once too with another girl. And that the fact that she never had the courage to tell her was an everlasting source of regret. She hoped that if I ever found myself in a similar position, I wouldn't make the same mistake. She gave me a photograph record with Ravel's fugue on side B. Wilson knew all things French, as we're both aware. That was so lovely of her. Loveliness hiding in plain sight. And then I graduated, and I never saw you again. Until we both found ourselves at the Operation Nightwatch meeting at the library. I recognized you right away, of course. Because I played that rock so many times over the years. 
seeing you in my mind each time I played it. Dancing. For 13 years is but a speck in the time-space continuum, but so much can happen. Objects, each on their unique parabolic arcs, approaching, growing distant, and then drawing close once again, pulled along invisible lines by mysterious forces, gravity, momentum, the wisdom of a teacher, very distant objects may eventually collide. In view, collisions are inevitable, even desirable. physics. <laughs> it could simply stop here. It's in the rules, after all. And if it simply stops, that would be all right with you. Is that what you're saying? The heart knows what it wants, but to give in to it, under any circumstance, to abandon all the rest may be calamitous in the bigger picture of life. And it would. We both have kids. Could we have? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it might be all right with me. Just knowing that we're shining from the same galaxy. We can always wave to each other from across the crowded sky. Maybe it'll be just enough. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um. Uh, meanwhile, I should see what's happening in the kitchen. <laughs> Last time I left Kenny in charge of a frozen dinner, he nearly burned out the apartment. <laughs> Any more 